Let's talk RDNA 4. Um, three principal products there, the 9060 XT, the 9070, and the 9070 XT. Um, Alex, what do you make about this? I mean, my view on um, RDNA 4 is that, well, first of all, we got FSR 4, which was long overdue and certainly does a job there and is is actually providing a proper alternative now to nvidia i think amd deserve kudos for that um uh, the products themselves um great i'd say in terms of in terms of sort of price versus performance i think that they're, they're pretty good the 90s 70 non-xt possibly not so good we we're expecting a trouncing of the 5070 and it didn't really happen but xt against um uh the 5070 ti is actually looking pretty good now and it is a good chunk cheaper um ray tracing performance improved um we've got redstone coming along which clearly is a work in progress mm -hmm. i'd say that we're still in a sort of transitionary period for amd where they've kind of finally woken up to what's happening in the, in the graphics market and need to catch up pretty quickly yeah that's that's the, the the appreciation i had it all started with oliver and i at ces and seeing a preview version of rsr4 <laughs> running on rdna4 technology which was a 9070 xt at that point in time just unlabeled in the rig in front of us and i think that was a great showing of just the general strangeness of amd's pr where we you we just <laughs> like you know with nvidia it's just like they launch a product and there's like six new technologies with it and they throw you in a room with tons of people explaining it. And AMD is just like, I walk in and you, what, 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 what is this? <laughs> no one told me about this beforehand. Um, so I, I would, that is the difference. And that it kind of also then that goes over to their software launch on PC. I feel like FSR 4, um, it was weird the way we were introduced to it, but when it came out, it was really high quality and great. But the rest of the software launches across the year were less successful, uh, specifically at Ray Regeneration and all of FSR Redstone, where um, it, it came out like in this kind of stutter stop kind of at the gate way that didn't really make much sense why Ray Regen launched earlier than the rest of the redstone package and it's only in one weird title right. in the multiplayer component and then you have mlfg where i still fundamentally disagree with the idea that you should be required to use vsync and an external frame rate cap to get your to get your frame pacing more orderly on a on a frame generation uh way you know i don't i think nvidia couples uh, frame generation on their side with reflex, um, which does a lot of things. And that is not required on the AMD side, the equivalent technology. So they suffer, you know, you can just turn on, if you have like a 240 Hertz monitor on the uh, Nvidia side, you can just turn on FG in a game and not worry about much of anything because you're not right. going to be getting like many frames be uh, b below four millisecond anyway, or something like that. Uh, but on the AMD side, you would need to be doing at least two more steps. And that is not guaranteed even uh, frame basing there because you're maybe at the whims of whatever VSync presentation is going to do with that frame. So it's like, I don't think that is a good way to launch the technology the way they did. But RDNA 4 is interesting to me because it's like, it's like AMD finally getting to like a little bit above of ampere level uh like the uh you know it'll be fast an rtx sorry an rx 9070 xt will be faster than a 3090 uh, across the board pretty much right but you know it took them that much longer to do it to get to that level and it's still not the top end product i really wish rdna4 did have an ultra high-end product uh, beyond the 9070 XT, uh, just for word of mouth reasons, uh, because ever the Nvidia dominates the conversation whenever you start talking about high end graphics because they have a high end graphics card, and AMD doesn't really have one. So it's like when everyone's like talking about spending X amount of money on a, a PC, as soon as they get get above a certain threshold, sticking with AMD is mainly a like a question of like brand loyalty. Uh, versus a actually smart idea of just getting the better product at that point in time. And I feel like that's mm -hmm. where AMD needs alternatives in each price category. Um, RDNA 4, once again, though, it's getting up there. It offered finally some new stuff that they didn't do beforehand. Um, but looking towards the future, is it always going to be that way? Will they have the same legacy support that NVIDIA has 
And there I have greater question marks because we got the transformer model for super resolution on DLSS, uh, frame gen, RR, you know, as well as FG on the, it was, it, it was backported to the products that supported those technologies. Whereas I don't know if that'll be the case for RDNA four in the future based upon how RDNA right. two and three are right now. Mm -hmm. Oliver, what do you think? Well, I I like RDNA four. I like the ninety seventy XT. I think they have you know good RT performance, good price performance, especially with the um, higher end devices. There, they have a really huge improvement in terms of efficiency per square millimeter of die over RDNA three, which is quite large relative to its uh, performance. Now here there is some lack of efficiency, maybe with like the ninety seventy XT, but the ninety sixty ninety seventy improves that dramatically, I think, by just decreasing the clocks, decreasing the configuration. Um, they're the best products for path tracing, but you know, they're they're good enough in a lot of ray tracing workloads to actually be a viable product. My only real complaint about RDNA 4, at least, relative to expectations, is it's not in handhelds, it's not in Steam Machine, it's a good architecture, but it's not showing up in very many places. Um, it seems like something that would really work well in low power applications. There's just really? nothing there. seems like something that might even be good. And if they had more laptop design wins, you know, it's just really in desktops at the moment. And that's a pretty limited slice of the overall gaming market, unfortunately. Um, mm. You know, also, I mean, AMD doesn't have a great history of supporting prior architect architectures and the fact that they're really just leaving RDNA 3 out there with no uh, FSR 4 equivalent. Um, that's disappointing. Not that I necessarily needed it or expected it, but the fact that they're dropping those architectures so quickly, it doesn't it doesn't give you a lot of confidence in their future roadmap for a product like this that might cost you a significant outlay of money, especially when Nvidia is dropping, you know, DLSS four for twenty eighteen cards on twelve nanometers. That's pretty. Those are pretty ancient pieces of technology, and yet Nvidia is doing I think a much better job of supporting their older cards. Obviously, Redstone that's been that's been talked about already. That's been uh, disappointing thus far. Um, the rollout is very quizzical, <laughs> very bizarre, <laughs> like Alex mentioned. Um, so yeah, let's just see where it goes. I mean, RDNA 5 looks very exciting if any of the uh, rumblings from the Mark Cerny's of the world and the Copite 7 kidneys of the world <laughs> or anything to go off of. Uh, but for now, RDNA 4 is good. I just wish it showed up in more places because I think it's a cool architecture. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'd also like to do a, a, put a quick shout out to the 9060 XT 16 gigabyte version. It is appreciably faster than the 5060 Ti. Right. You're getting the 16 gigs of RAM um, at $350. Um, you are getting uh, performance, which is faster than the PS5 Pro. Um, and I think that's pretty cool. It seemed to get like massacred by the review for, uh, by the tech press at launch i really liked it i thought it was cool um and the other thing of course is that when you get to that um sort of cheaper price point and the lower capabilities of the gpu um the features of nvidia beyond dlss super resolution multi-frame gen for example even normal frame gen the computational cost of frame generation at those low on those lower par gpus makes it more difficult to use um, and, you know, basically nullifies an advantage NVIDIA has against AMD at that point. So when you're looking at the 9060 XT, I thought it was actually a pretty, pretty good product and price versus performance looked pretty good as well. Um, so I, I, I kind of liked it.